here in Italy, in Rome, uh, one of the places I've always dreamed of coming. Well, uh, I guess th the thing that I, I'm, I'm excited to share or, or say or encourage anybody is be a better you. <laughs> did you start thinking about writing uh, a drum method and uh, what does this DVD, your DVD, uh, has uh, different from other DVDs? <laughs> wow. You know, that very question is what I asked myself <laughs> and that's how the whole DVD came about. Um, it, it, we recorded it in the end of 2005. And, um, I looked at the market, saw all the DVDs, hmm. and I'm like, man, what do I have, you know, to say? Everybody has something, you know, unique to say, and I, I, I didn't want to do that. You know, I didn't want to say, hey, my thing is paradiddles, hmm. because I play more than just paradiddles, you know, so I don't want to label myself as just a paradiddle guy, you know. So for me, um, I said, what, what do I do well? You know, what, what's natural for me? And I practiced so much <laughs> when I was little. I mean, that's all I ever did. That's all. So I was like, and then I looked at the market and I said, oh, no one really has anything about how to practice. But everybody asks me that question all the time. How do you practice? How long should I practice? What should I practice? How the DVD came about was when I was in Drummer's Collective. New York City in school and I was falling behind on my schoolwork now I just graduated high school you know in Michigan moved to New York City and I'm thinking I'm gonna fail drum school <laughs> what fail drum school okay so long story short my teachers were you know you know fussing me out you know and we have three hours practice time guaranteed every day at the school. Um, every day you go to the board, you look, you find your name, three hours to a room, that's you, three hours every day. So I'm at home one night and this is two weeks before final exams, hmm. right? And I have like 14 classes. So I'm, I'm, I couldn't sleep. I'm like, oh. I'm stressed. I'm like, ah. Oh. So I'm like, I'm, I'm walking around in my room. It's like 3 a.m., you know, 3 in the morning. I'm like, oh, what am I going to do? I can't fail drum school, you know. I want to make my dad proud. I want to make my mom proud. So it hit me, you know, because I, I used to manage uh, McDonald's, gas stations, uh, Arby's. I was a shift manager. And that's one of my skills is organization. So I'm in school, I'm like, I'm like oh, wait a minute. I just need to get organized. You know? I can something do this. that you know. Yeah. This is a, I can do this work. It's not hard. I'm just I'm unorganized. So I begin to put all my books in piles. And I had five piles at first. And it was too much. I was like, it's still complicated. It's not simple enough. It's gotta be simple. So I ended up putting everything in three piles, and that's how I come up with the ABC method. And I was like, okay, well, everything, this, this challenges my mind. The A section challenges my mind, my thinking, my processing. The B section, I just gotta practice, just keep doing it. Backwards, forwards, left, right, up, down, inside, out, all kinds of combinations. C section, go play, <laughs> you know? This happens every day of our lives as musicians. Somebody says, hey, you're a great drummer. Come play in my band. They give you a CD. First thing you do is listen. You learn. Second thing, you practice the music, right? Third, go, go play. play. 
it's like, why don't I practice like that? If practice makes perfect, right? So I put all the books in. And in two weeks' time, I was, like, behind everybody in class. And I'm, like, two weeks ahead. Wow. Because every day, I would go in, and for the A section, I'd work on one of the hours, the first hour. B second, B section, second hour. C three, section, second. Three hours. Oh, right. man, it worked out right. perfect. And then it got to the point where if there was another student that didn't show up for his three hours, I took his two because <laughs> I was motivated. I was like, I saw myself growing and I was getting my work and it was all coming easy. And I'm just, I'm now I'm focused and I'm organized. And my teachers were like, yo, what happened? What happened? <laughs> you went from nothing to like, ah, you know? So that's how the ABC practice method came about. And then um, some, let me see, that was 1998, 99, 2005 was when I recorded the DVD. Hmm. So some five, six years later, after practicing like this all the time, it just became obvious of what I could put on a DVD. It was your method that you felt, yep. of course. Very interesting. Now, your roots, your roots come from gospel. Yes. And you started playing drums uh, in uh, gospel bands. Mm -hmm. How important was that kind of musical education in terms of uh, growth as well as your personal, not only musical growth? Musically, it was the best thing I think that ever could have happened to me. I'm so grateful for God blessing me to start that way because you go through everything starting young. You know, the pressure of being on stage, um, the pressure of making it right, learning the music. We had, to, I had playing in front of, you know, all kinds of pressures that you go through every day. I was doing that every week. You see what I'm saying? Every week, all of my life. And you were young, very young. young. I started when I was two. <laughs> you know, three and four years old, before my feet could reach the pedals, yeah. my uncle would sit me on his knee. He would play the pedals, <laughs> and i play the drums. And I had a little pacifier, too keep the beat you know for the service so i started i was getting you know over the fear of playing in front of people early you know and you you start to begin you know you build confidence you you, you start to trust your own voice you know is what you have to say so to speak so um musically it was the best thing plus the thing i like about gospel music is a lot of people always ask me this you know what's the difference between gospel music and every all, all of the music the lyrics the lyrics is the only thing. Gospel is, everything is a gospel. Rock, fusion, jazz, yeah. funk, <laughs> ballads, orchestral, Thinking classical. Thinking about it, yes. Yeah, it's all, why? Because it's all, it's people writing songs from the heart. So you're influenced by whatever you listen to every day. So everything is in gospel. It's just the lyrics, the content, or the message that makes it gospel music. Um, personally, you know, from what my beliefs and you know and all of that, it's 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 uh, definitely changed my life for the better because the whole message is about love. It's about people. It's about giving. It's about growing. You know, and that's that's the whole message. And I, I not only did I grow up in it, but I choose to live it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But that also comes through my music. I, I, that's what I'm hearing people say, and I like that. I I, I appreciate that as a, a response. So. Yeah, and you show it shows also when you uh, communicate with people. It's something that uh, comes out that we can feel. Mm. I, mean, I I could feel that uh, tonight, so mm. that was great. That's why I've added in the question not only the musical growth but also your personal growth. At the end of the day, it's about people. The, what the reason why we get on stage? It's about yes. people. So. <laughs> considered a gospel drummer mm -hmm. uh, don't you think that considering yourself just a gospel drummer is a limit yes the funny thing is people say I'm a gospel drummer I say I'm a drummer 
you know, one of my biggest heroes, and I love and appreciate this guy more than I could probably ever show him, is Dennis Chambers. And um, I'm trying to remember how I heard about it. I think it was an interview I was reading, and someone asked him, he said, even though I don't read music, I understand that if I sit out in a studio session where I get called for whatever, who I, I don't know these guys, I don't know this, this, this. It says drum chart. Play Latin music. You see what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten, the chart's going to say drummer played this, drummer played that. He says, I'm a drummer and I should be able to play all styles. I, uh, he does, it, it's, I'm kind of like him. I don't look at it, to a certain degree, I don't look at it as style. I just look at it as music. It's just something, get involved in this style of music, you know. But if you take the, the, the box off of it, then you see the freedom within the culture. Let's just say Latin music. Oh, yeah, Latin music is a style, yeah. We as humans want to categorize it as Latin style because, so we can understand it and, you know, begin to grow in it. But engulf yourself in the Latin culture, and it's not a style. It's a life. It's, it's a way of being. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And then once you do that, oh my God, it all comes out of in your music. So I just consider myself a drummer. People say, me and you guys are, yeah, my roots are gospel, but I play all style. Yeah. Maybe because there's so much need, people need to categorize everything today, <laughs> which yeah. is, is something that in music, I think really it is uh, a big mistake. Yeah, I do. I do. It's, it's, it's twofold. It, it comes from to me what the true essence of life is period it's about balance you got two arms you got two eyes two nostrils two ears two legs just imagine trying to do everything with only half you see what i'm saying yeah and notice because you have two you can create a rhythm yeah. so just as much as we need to understand and categorize for uh um, you know communication purposes okay then at, at that point once you got it stop thinking about yes. it and live and start to live yes yes you're very involved with teaching also mm. um, you enjoy the educational aspect and this is because you have a great respect of uh, students of your students Mm. You also have your own school. Can you explain us what your teaching method consists of? Well, I'm just doing private lessons until I launch the other, you know, the full part of it. Um, private lessons are hour and a half long, and it's based upon the ABC method. Everything we do is based upon the ABC method, hence why the lessons are 90 minutes long, okay, um, because I can do each segment for 30 minutes, yeah. so in that, it's a template, and the student comes in, and you know, so they always come in as something, <laughs> if you, you know, if you, they come in as this, Hey, I got, and I'm like, okay, just have a seat <laughs> and we'll run a few things by you and we'll find out where you are. And, you know, A, B, C, you could be here in the A, here in the B, here in the C, or here in the C, or however, it doesn't matter. The whole goal is that everyone is different, yes, everyone of course. Yeah. And over the years, I'm learning how to um, uh, create ways to reach everybody. You know, it's been beautiful. I love it. I love it. <laughs> new challenges i'm like wow okay i gotta okay he responds to this or she responds to this yes. so i gotta figure out another way to communicate this you know so and then I also teach twice a month in drummers collective okay but when you see a student in front of you the first time you you see a student someone comes to you uh what do you what do you try to find in him or in in her that you, th you, s you should say, okay, this guy can be, or this, this lady can be a good drummer? Mm. Nine times out of ten, I always ask them, what are their goals? And 60% of the time, I get, never thought of that. I'm going, 
wow, that's just like getting in the car, you know, and going, no purpose, you know. So from that, oh, that tells me so much. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And the next thing, because it tells me how you think, how you process things. So I'll know, okay, you, I need to write stuff down. I need to make sure you, I need to hold you accountable for constantly writing stuff down. Because otherwise you'll forget. You see, I learned a lot by that. And then the second thing is, have a seat on the drums, and I grab the bass. And we start off there, and I put the metronome on. And it's like, between them two things, with the bass, I'm going to find out musically where you are. You see what I'm saying? And with the metronome, technically, I'm going to find out everything. I'm going to see everything all at one time. And how can you handle the pressure of one and two? Let's go. Oh, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I find out everything right away. Oh, and this is um, it is very helpful for you also to play uh, many instruments. How does this help you in terms of uh, teaching, but also in uh, playing uh, drums with your uh, during your career? From teaching, it, it, what it does is it it it, it helps me. It almost like say you came in. You know, you come into the room, and I say, hey, how you doing? And, you know, how's life? And, you know, we kind of get all that out the way. <laughs> and then I say, okay, what's your goals? And you say, ah, I'd love to do this. I'd love to do that. Cool. I already kind of got a path. You want to head this way. So being blessed to kind of have already been down this path, I'm kind of standing at the end of the path going, come on. You see what I'm saying? So I'm I'm approaching who you are or finding where you are from the end. I'm you know, I'm playing and it's I, I had a student one time come and he says, Man, I wanna be so free. I wanna be free like you, man. I, I mean, I can tell you're not thinking, you're not counting, you're just this, this, that, 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 right? I said, Okay, cool. So, you know, I gradually got into it. We said it so we played the first thing and I said, Okay, so I'm trying to kicking up the fire, so to speak. And we get to this one part, and I'm like all over the one. I hit everything but the one. And I'm looking at him like, where you at? Like, he's like, uh, I'm like, come on, man, let's go. You want to come? Like, you see, and it, I'm trying to give him a synopsis of himself, not me. You see, yeah, we're in this moment. I need you to see yourself. Because if you can't grasp where you are right now, then it's going to be hard for you to move forward. Once you do that, then I could come to you and say, this is where you need to start. Right here. How was your experience at the Morning Drummer Festival? Festival. Yes, of um, course. Man, it took it took a lot for me just not to just be emotional, you know, crying and because if you understand my background, first of all, it was all gospel for so many years, and then the first CD I got was the Zildjian Compilation CD, People Who Speak With Their Hands. And it had Dave Weckl, Steve Smith, Vinny, Dennis. It had everybody on this compilation. I mean, Aaron Cole, Spin Doctors. I mean, there was all kinds of drummers. 
So I go from gospel to that. Like, you see what I'm saying? It wasn't just one drummer and you just fall in love with this one guy. You can't. It's like I got 12 Everyone. different guys and I'm going, I've never really heard anything like this, right? So already there was kind of like this, I put it on a pedestal, so to speak. And then in my discovery or living going on, and then you find out modern drummer festival, man, all the stars play on this. You know, for years it was just like, that's what sets the tone. It's like, okay, this is yeah. this is the it for this yeah. year. And I've seen careers blow up from <laughs> modern drummer. You know, you do one modern drummer, all of a sudden everybody knows who you are. Yeah. You know, so when I got that email, it actually came through the collective <laughs> I was standing in the in the room. I was teaching. I, you know, I'm just being me. You know, never even thought something would come my way. <laughs> and the, uh, my collective, you know, people, they were like, uh, "Hey, why would you like to do a master class?" And I was like, "Cool, nothing I haven't done here at the school." I'm like, "So what were you? No, 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 for modern drummer." I was like, "For who? <laughs> <laughs> for what?" <laughs> like, say that again. <laughs> you know how you just, you know, your robot goes crazy? Kind of like that moment. So he says, yeah, Modern Drummer Festival. I said, the Modern Drummer Festival? No. Man, come on, man. This is not a joke. You don't joke about stuff like this. Because I'm emotional right now. I want to come. I need to give you a hug. Okay, so, so I'm freaking out, right? And he walks away, and I had to go teach a lesson right after that. So I'm in the lesson, and looking at the dude, and he's like, he's Japanese. He's like, oh, thank you for taking us. I'm like, I'm like, I couldn't think of a quarter note, man. I was like, I always ask myself, what's a quarter note? <laughs> That's how freak, you know. Okay, so speeding up, I get there, <laughs> and the, the crazy thing is, I'm usually I'm, I'm a punctual, business-minded person. Got to be on time, you know, treat people right, that type of stuff. Man, I couldn't sleep. I think I got to the drum festival like three hours early. Like, <laughs> I'm just sitting a lot. Like, <laughs> it was like one of them things, right? So. My everybody's there. I mean, they're de used to this. You know, my drum, my drum guys, all you know, yeah. Sonar, Vic Firth, Evans, Mino. I mean, they, you know, all oh, we do this every year. So they're like, "Hey, Colvin, I'm tired today." I'm like, "Oh, yeah, cool. All right." <laughs> so I'm walking around playing on the pad, and I'm trying not to appear a nervous. I'm not nervous. I mean, I've done this stuff before. I've done many clinics and, you know, travel. It's just, I'm excited. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm in the back going, pace yourself, talk slowly, you know. <laughs> Say, you know, three million words in 20 seconds. So I was all the time, man. Oh, so I'm still, I look at the now, you know, I look at the, this is actually the, yeah, this is from one of the solo parts. Look at this, Eden. I like that. <laughs> so, well, I was, was just like... A great out. performance, anyway. Thank you. Actually, I'm, I'm really excited about this new series, and please, people, understand, I'm not just saying this because, you know, it sounds good to do the sonar play on the pitch. No, that's not. I'm a, I've been a fan of sonar drums since 12, 13 years old. You know, back in the day, they had a reputation about being really expensive. So being from a small town in my area, no one stocked them. So it was just kind of like the oh, angel drums, you know, you just, oh my God, sonar drums, you know. So I've been a fan of sonar drums way before I was endorsed. But this new series I'm really excited about is called the Prolite series. Um, it's, it's a thin maple shell reinforcement rings, and it, they, they've 
reconfigured. They made the hardware lighter. They put some of the the uh, SQ2 components or the essence of and recreated some of things that that uh, you know you always want to grow update stuff so um i'm just i'm really excited about it because they've done away with a couple different things and they just kind of said this is and we like all of the endorsers pros you know oh, i love this i love this i don't like that they took all the cons and just mm -hmm. chopped them up man the tone is amazing i just sonar drums project so well i'm kind of like a mad scientist when it comes to gear and and understanding stuff i used to drum at the dr going to drummers collective one of my jobs was to tech all the drums in the school so every night i had an hour and a half to tune 17 to 21 kids change heads you see what i'm saying all brands so i know my stuff <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, by far, man, just sonar drums are just, they're like my favorite drums. Not just because I'm endorsed, but I wanted to play these drums. The, the one thing I love about the drums is the undercut shells. You know, it's, if it says 10 inch, it's not exactly 10, it's slightly small. Why? So that the plat, the head is fully on the rim. Yes. No interference with the, you know, the metal, the casings, anything, and you get a true sound. And each drum is its own you know i'm, I'm getting to the problem start naming each drum this is billy this is harry this is tom this is jerry you know and that's big bertha <laughs> and little mary <laughs> so i'm really excited i mean i can go on and on and on but the drum the tone man i, I think that's what's uh, the most thing i want to say right now the tone of the drums is ridiculous and federico um you know He's on a tour with me. He's playing same kit. He's playing a pro light. Yeah. And the cool thing is that I try to tell people to check out the sound because he's got coated heads and uh -huh. I got clear. So you can hear the difference. The difference yes. Same moment. And it's like they're still, you know, fat tone, yes. big sound. So right. I'm really digging right. it. Right. So our pro light. Two minutes, yes. Um, who's, um, who's Chris Coleman apart from uh, being a drummer? <laughs> wow. Man, <laughs> that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, well, I'm a daddy. <laughs> uh, my son Tyson, he has changed my life for the better. He lives in another state, so I have to Skype with him and I have to travel to see him. And we, he's he's a lot like me. I mean, when I see him playing around with his toys, he's like me. He's intense about everything. He's well aware of what's going on. Like, he's very smart. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was on Skype. I have to say this story because I still laugh about it. His mom grabbed him, you know. And said, hey, Tyson, your dad's getting ready to go. You know, we're on Skype. Computer. Say bye to your dad. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's fighting that. Yeah, let him be. She's like, all right, all right. So he goes back to playing. He grabs his little cart and he's walking by and she says, I'm talking to her. Okay, so we'll make sure we got this for him and this is, you know. So he's just, I mean, he's in his own world. Like daddy is not even there, right? So he gets around the corner and she says, so you're not gonna say bye to daddy? He goes, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> he knew every, you know, he was well. So I'm, right now I'm just having fun being a dad, you know. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm into investing. Um, there's a couple chain of restaurants I want to try to open up. Um, I'm also looking into um, franchising a couple other business ventures. Um, I love to travel. I love communication. Working on many different languages right now. I is one of them. Okay. <laughs> Just started. <laughs> so, you know, you have to have that in order to really make some true moves. Um, I'm a lot of what I do is people oriented. So I'm, I'm trying to create uh, some things that really enhance the lives of people. You know, whether you be a musician or a person just needing to learn how to fill out a resume. You know, um, I've done corporate America. Um, I've done sales. Like I said, I've done management. Um, I, the funny thing is I didn't do good in school, not because I couldn't. It's just it was boring. <laughs> I, my dad is like two positions away from 
running a utility company uh, for two or three states, you know. He's also, my grandfather was a pastor. He had 10 kids, four boys, six girls. There's 22 grandchildren. He was a full-time pastor. That's a, that's a life right there. And full-time GM, General Motors employee. He put all 10 through college way back then. So you can imagine what he instilled in them, you, you know, leader. I'm, all my aunties and uncles were leaders in some kind of community activist or something. I mean, professional this, professional that, you know, degrees everywhere. I was the same way. I was just more, more of a hands-on person as opposed to a book. For, I love to read. I love to study. But it's got to be intent, you know, purposeful. So that's my roots, you know. And a lot of people just see the drums. And I'm just like, okay. Uh, there's so just a much part more. of it, oh a small God. part of it, it's a very small part. The drums is, you know, that's why it was easy for me to kind of go, okay, this is drums. Let's go to school for bass. You know, okay, this is the bass. Piano's next. I play sax and trumpet in school. You know, yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm into business. I like riding motorcycles. You know, jet skis and snowmobiles are like my favorite. Snowmobiling, you have to go snowmobiling. <laughs> It's like write it down on your bucket list. We have this thing called the bucket list. You know, before you kick the bucket, you know, you leave the earth, you got to ride a snowmobile. All right. Articat. I'm an Articat man. Thanks, Articat. You can endorse me later on. <laughs> so that's me, man. I just, I love life. I love to live. And I realize at the end of the day, it's about people. So everything I'm doing and, and, and I feel like God is blessing me to create has to do with and helping people in some kind of way, in many different ways. So, uh, I'm here in Italy, in Rome, uh, one of the places I've always dreamed of coming. Um, Hospitality is great, food is amazing, the people are uh, amazing as well. I guess th the thing that I, I'm, I'm excited to share or, or say or encourage anybody is be a better you. Whatever that, whatever that's gonna take, just be a better you, you know, and realize that you're in in your quest of becoming a better you. Just realize you're not the only person on the face of the earth. Yeah. So you find a balance between them two, you'll be good. Yeah. Be good to go. Seriously. So whatever you're doing, um, give it your all, and. And then you can go to you can go to sleep at night with peace, you know, because you know, man, I, I did my best, I did the best I could do. I'll get up tomorrow and do it again. So, oh. such a wise man. Thanks, man. I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't, ain't gonna see you having all time. You. <laughs> Pleasure, man. Thank you, man. Thanks. <laughs> cool. cool, cool.